Hi guys, there's a rumour going around that uh, European tapes don't play well in Japanese decks. Japanese, read Chinese, whatever. And um, I'm wondering if this is true. I, I'm i going to look at this one today, which is the Sound Level 1, which is a Type 1 tape from BASF, Basif, Basif, whatever you want to call it. Uh, German company. And, um, well, let's have a look, see what's what. I found it difficult to date this one. I've had a look on the database and it appears to be late 90s. But um, it's Basif branded, not MTech. So I don't know. If anybody knows what the date is, please put put it in the comments. It would be useful. Anyway, let's have a look. This is rather nice. It's got a shiny, metallic-y sort of skin on it. And uh, we'll see if we can get that off in a second. And as you can see, it's... It's very. I, I like the design on this. I think it's actually been put together by somebody who knows what makes things look nice. And there's the, the pull tab, which is not the easiest thing in the world to operate. So we'll give it a go. And uh, yeah, need longer longer nails. I think. Yeah, I'm trying to get this off without actually damaging the thing because I, I like it so much. But we'll we'll see if I can. Okay, so we get the knife onto it. This, uh, I don't think that's going to be work, working very well either. So hang on, let's have another go. Um, yeah, okay, let's just see if we can just cut that bit there. And uh, whoop, oh well, there we go. Yeah, might just as well slice it up there now. So let's see. Um, yep, yep, that's working. Yeah, give it a go. Just a little bit further. Oh, yep. Nope. I suppose if I'd use a proper proper sort of um, standing knife I might have got better results but I don't like using those really sharp knives because I like my fingers to be kept intact okay let's see how this goes so um, it's not going to slide out so I'm just going to have to peel it oh well it was worth a try but uh, well, I, I, actually I'm a little bit disappointed now that is gorgeous look at that that, that is really really nice and um then when you get down into here, well, it's a bit plain. But anyway, let's have a proper look at this now. So that's, ah, that's better. That's nicer. That looks quite good. And uh, yeah, we got the Barsif ribbed case. Although it doesn't feel quite the same as the, pre the ones I've done previously. This one is, feels a bit, um, well, it's not quite as robust I think but it's uh, obviously been done to the same mould and let's have a look here now okay so we've got um, it's a one of these multi shells it's, so it's got the, the where the cutouts would be for the different types but this is obviously a, a type 1 that label is really nice I know it's simple it's stuck on but it's silvery and it looks not, it's quality it's good quality cheap printing, if that makes any sort of sense. Right, let's have a look, see what else we got on here. Um, right, let's have a look at the tape itself. Got my biro. And let's have a look, see if this is... Right, um, cool, it's got a very long leader on it. And there we go. Now, on my... I'm just looking in the camera now, yeah. On the camera, it looks the same in real life. That is the colour of the tape. It's a sort of a, a dark milk chocolate colour, if that makes any sense, rather than a light milk chocolate colour. And um, this one's in very nice condition. It's obviously been stored well. Well, it's not obviously it's not that old. It's 90 minutes, and yeah, okay. I think we're doing all right with this. The, the shell, as you can see, it's a totally clear shell. So you must have clear slit sheet. It's got five screws. Yeah, there are the five screws. And um, right, there is no flex. So I would have to say that that feels like a quality shell. And I'm quite happy with that. So let's have another look at the J card. Because it's... Uh, oh, look, there's some stickers. Let's pull the stickers out, have a look at them. Yeah, they look, uh, well, mediocre. I must say that compared to the previous cassettes that I've done, which was uh, Bassif, they were much 
nicer J cards in them. This this is uh, very much a case of it'll do the job. It's good quality card, but it's not much of it, and it's not you know. I mean, it's it's okay, but then of course you're just going to write on it. It's the it's the shiny card, not the stuff that that you get on some of these cassettes, the cheap, really cheap ones, which is all absorbent. It is slightly shiny, which means you're going to need a proper pen to write on it. And uh, yeah, well, we'll put that all back together and we'll take it up and we'll try popping it in the machine, shall we? See what it works like. Okay, now to the W1200, which is the machine I always use to test these things, if I can, because I want to have comparable results and I want the tape to be tested, not the machine. I'm not interested in showing off the decks, not in this one anyway. Right, so cue it all up. I will fast forward and rewind it and uh, make sure everything's okay, and then we'll go in for the proper testing and we'll go from there. So I've done that now, I've rewounded it, fast forwarded it, made sure everything's okay, and now I'm actually recording my thing. And as you can see on here, there is, um, there is Patrick Patrikos coming up, I think, and uh, there he goes. And that's the standard music, which we always use because we want to compare one tape to the other. There we go. I've just upgraded my software and this is what it shows as being the audio trace on the video software. I think that looks just beautiful the way that it's there because it hasn't got all the grid lines and everything that you got with Audacity. It's just a pretty picture, but it looks like it should be that way. At this point, I haven't actually heard what the tape plays back like. I did this all electronically, and I didn't listen, didn't monitor to what was going on. So I will hear it at the same time as you will, near enough. And um, anyway, so we'll start off with the poof ting thing, and then we'll go through the charts, and then we'll have a listen at the end. So don't miss that. In case you're wondering, that gives us a clue as to what we're going to find later. So let's have a quick look at the first chart then. First up is silence, and this is rated at minus 76 dB. That's a pretty good number. We'll be able to hear what that sounds like later on. Interestingly, it's bigger, but it's flatter than the Type 2s. At this point, I haven't heard it, but I have seen the pictures. Audacity trace of the full thing. It looks all right. See a bit of a frequency thing here, though. That's the 1K and the 3K 0 dB. Looking at this, can you see there is a similarity here as well? So far, so good. 0 dB white noise, looking predictable. 0 dB pink noise, looking like we expect it to. The 0 dB white noise is looking quite interesting, but this minus 20 looks far more interesting. And this minus 20 dB pink noise is showing us somewhere where we're going. I want to show you something I've never seen on here before, and I've done a few of these. Just look at how symmetrical and how smooth these are. Minus 20 frequency sweep, because this is the 0 dB version, and they're not the same. Now we're going to have a look at the frequency and the distortion figures. Do you want to place bets if they're high or low? The minus 20 is no surprise there. Very good. Both the 1K and the 3K are clean. Bit of a surprise on here. Both the 1K and the 3K have got exactly the same size of harmonic, which is pretty low. Bearing that in mind, this was a overdriven bit, but not very much. The harmonics are at a pretty low level. Remember this picture and look how big this is. When we look at this, you can see there's a huge spike there, but it's not to be unexpected. However, it's uh, peaked out at 3 dB, even though it was recording at 5. We've got some even harmonics creeping in there as well at 6K and 15K. So now for the great unveiling, freeze for range, freeze for response. What's it look like? Da-da! Well, it's not the most impressive I've ever seen, but it's not bad. But wait, let's have a look at the next one, which is the minus 20. Now that, for a type 1, is sweet. Look at the way it goes out there, right the way up. So now the moment we've all been waiting for, I'm going to play the Patrick Patrickos. Uh, both 0 dB and minus 20 dB and get back to you afterwards. Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrickos, dynamic and clean. <laughs>
now at minus 20 dB, Where We Want to Go by Patrick Patrikos, Dynamic and Clean. Well, based on that, there's a, it's a very good tape. I would suggest that it means that you've got a tape there that can take the high levels. It won't actually distort terribly. It will start to, it will soft distort before it uh, goes nasty. But if you want to get the best out of this tape, you want to run it at around about the zero dB so that the delicacies are there because you don't want to be banging it uh, if you want to get the high frequency response. So ideal for classical music if you want to do it on a type one well, the only drawback on it as far as i can see the only downside is that it's got a it's got the 76 db hiss which is you know that's a type one but if you turn on your noise reduction your dolby or on this one if you was to turn on the uh, the arns or whatever you'd get your 10 db back and that would put this then in the realms of a normal type two tape without dolby and uh, that would be excellent Anyway, that's it for this time. If you got anything out of this, please like, subscribe, do the, all the good things for the channel. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you'd like to have any further information, please put that in the comments below because I'm more than happy to answer questions. And if I'm doing something you think is wrong, then let me know in the comments below. You know what? Just put something in the comments below. It all helps. Anyway, catch you another time. See ya. Bye-bye.